Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Today, we're looking at the best Z790 motherboard and best Z690 motherboard for 13th gen Intel Raptor-like processors and 12th gen Intel Older-like processors. Despite the fact that both 12th and 13th gen are compatible with both Z690 and Z790 motherboards, it's actually pretty complicated to know which one you should buy. So we'll cover the best Z690 motherboard and best Z790 motherboard features, including explaining Z690 versus Z790 for Intel 13th gen Raptor-like processors. And we'll make specific product recommendations for every budget level for the best motherboard for you. If you get value out of the video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. So which CPUs are we focused on today? Well, for 13th gen Intel Raptor Lake, we have the 13600K with six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. The 13700K with eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores. And the 13900K with eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. The K in the name of the CPU just means that it can be overclocked on a compatible Z series motherboard, something Intel calls unlocked. Now note that each processor has an F version like the 13600KF, which just means that it does not have integrated graphics and typically it's a little cheaper. Pro tip for video editors, avoid the F CPUs as the integrated GPU does help out when exporting video from programs like Adobe Premiere Pro. We also have the 12600K, 12700K, and 12900K, which have the same number of performance cores, but only half as many efficiency cores as their 13th gen models. And of course, they're also overclockable. Now, both of these CPU generations share the LGA 1700 socket motherboards, which are the 600 and 700 series. So why do you want a Z690 motherboard or Z790 motherboard if you have an unlocked Intel 12th or 13th gen CPU? Well, the first reason is of course overclocking, which can only be done properly on Z series motherboards. Now, while it is possible to run these CPUs on cut down motherboards like B660, H670, or H610, and their equivalent 700 series boards once they launch, you'll lose a lot of features and could get lower performance from these weaker boards. So I advise anyone buying an unlocked k 12th or 13th gen Intel CPU to pair it with a Z690 or Z790 motherboard to get the most out of it. Let's talk about Z690 versus Z790 motherboards. While both 13th gen Intel Raptor Lake processors and 12th gen Intel Alder Lake processors will work with either Z690 or Z790 motherboards, there are some key differences. Now, while this seems complicated, it basically comes down to whether or not you want to run ultra fast DDR5 memory and how much connectivity you really need. Let's address the memory differences between Z690 and Z790 motherboards. While you still need to buy a board specific for DDR5 or DDR4 memory, with each model typically offering both a DDR4 and separate DDR5 version, there have been improvements to DDR5 memory controllers on the Z790 motherboards, which generally list compatibility with DDR5 kits running about 10% faster than their Z690 counterparts. For instance, the MSI Tomahawk Z690 DDR5 motherboard is rated to run a two-stick configuration called one DIMM per channel or one DPC using dual rank, noted as 2R, at a maximum speed of 6,000 megatransfers. Note that of course MSI incorrectly lists this as megahertz, but that's pretty common. And we go over all this in our best RAM for gaming 2022 video. So check that out if you're confused. This configuration is typical of a two by 16 gigabyte DDR5 kit for 32 gigabytes total. Looking at the Z790 DDR5 Tomahawk, we see it is rated compatible for that same configuration up to speeds of 6600 mega transfers for about a 10% difference. Now note that what we're looking at here is rated compatibility, not absolute speeds. So it's entirely possible that you could get the kit of DDR5 6600 speed memory to actually run on the Z690, but it's clear that the Z790 has a stronger memory controller as we would expect as DDR5 technology matures. Remember that if you want to guarantee RAM compatibility, you can always consult the motherboard manufacturer's qualified vendor list or QVL for short, which lists specific kits of memory that the board has been tested with. And of course, remember to enable XMP on your memory in the BIOS in order to get the full rated speed. Note that the memory compatibility speed increase in Z790 versus Z690 is specific to DDR5 memory. Looking at DDR4 versions of both the Z690 and Z790 Tomahawk, 
and a number of other DDR4 motherboards, I don't see any other differences. That's not surprising given how mature DDR4 technology is versus DDR5. Whether you should buy a DDR4 motherboard versus DDR5 motherboard is really going to come down to RAM pricing. DDR5 memory is no longer as stupidly expensive as it once was, at least in the US market. But at the time of filming, the higher speed DDR5 memory that you see in many of the benchmark videos is still many times more expensive than fast DDR4. So while that remains the case, many users might be better off buying a DDR4 motherboard and cheaper but fast DDR4 RAM and spending the extra money on getting a faster graphics card or higher core count CPU, especially if you're just gaming. At some point in the future, I do expect that DDR5 prices will likely come down to a reasonable point. So the only evergreen advice we can offer is consider your budget and current DDR5 pricing, which you can check using the links in the video description. The other major difference in Z690 versus Z790, it's the amount of connectivity. Now, while both chipsets have 28 total PCIe lanes, the Z690 has 12 running at PCIe Gen 4 speeds and 16 running at PCIe Gen 3 speed. The Z790 boards take eight of those PCIe 3 speed lanes and increase them to PCIe Gen 4 speed. So a total of 20 Gen 4 lanes and eight Gen 3 lanes. Now this yields a modest increase in the total amount of connectivity in terms of PCIe slot speeds, the number and speed of USB ports and the like. Just how big a difference is for you depends on your needs. As in reality, Z690 already contained more than enough connectivity for most users. So I suspect for most buyers, this should not influence their decision, except for more production oriented power users. But what about PCIe Gen 5 speed devices like future graphics cards and SSDs? Now most Z790 motherboards, they've entirely avoided supporting the brand new PCIe Gen 5 M.2 SSDs, something that we called a total waste of money in our best Ryzen 7000 motherboard guide. And you're only gonna find them on the higher end and more expensive motherboards. As we said in our Ryzen 7000 motherboard guide, except for very niche use cases. And you folks out there know who you are. PCIe Gen 5 device support is unlikely to matter in the realistic lifespan of these motherboards. That being said, most Z690 and Z790 motherboards sold and all the ones that we recommend do already include a PCIe Gen 5 speed main GPU slot. Let's talk about motherboard BIOS because this is a quick but important note for Z690 motherboard buyers using a 13th gen Intel Raptor Lake processor. It's very likely you will need to update the motherboard BIOS in order to get the system to post for the very first time. Now I see folks all the time who are terrified of updating their BIOS. So let me assure you, this is not only completely normal to do, but I recommend you update your motherboard BIOS to the latest version even if it posts without an update. I especially recommend doing that BIOS update before you change any settings in the BIOS itself or try to install Windows. We have a whole video on how to use BIOS flashback, something Gigabyte calls Q Flash Plus, just to be different. All the Z690 motherboards that we recommend have BIOS flashback and it's fairly prevalent on most Z690 motherboards. Motherboard VRMs. Now most of the Z790 motherboards have either kept the same VRM configuration as their Z690 models or improved it with additional phases or beefed up the heat sinks. Since the Z690 VRMs were already incredibly overbuilt, even for the 12900K, the only concern will be running ridiculous pairings like a 13900K heavily overclocked on the cheapest Z690 or Z790 motherboards, something nobody should do anyway. Any of the motherboards that we recommend will be absolutely fine for a 13600K or 13700K. And 13900K owners should simply skip the most budget boards just to be safe. Let's talk about motherboard audio because one unfortunate casualty of the Z690 versus Z790 switch seems to be the quality of motherboard audio codecs on some of the Z790 motherboards versus their Z690 models with several downgrading their audio codecs to entry level ones like the ALC897. Remember when evaluating motherboard audio, there are multiple factors, but the audio codec, it's one way to help determine the quality. Entry level audio codecs like the ALC897, they're fine, but mid-range ALC1200 audio codec brings improved signal to noise and special support for headphones plugged into the front cased audio jacks. The highest end audio codecs are the ALC1220 as well as the newer but similar ALC4080 that include additional audio encoding and decoding support, as well as support for high impedance headphones 
plugged into the front case jacks. Remember that onboard audio only matters if plugging in an analog audio device using a connection like this. And if you're using a digital connection like USB or HDMI, then you're bypassing the motherboard audio in favor of the processor on the digital device. Let's jump into our product recommendations, which will all be linked in the video description below if you wanna check current pricing. Now these recommendations are based heavily on price to performance, and I do expect the Z790 motherboards to fall in price over time, the same way that Z690 motherboards have. So check the links for current pricing in your region, which might differ from the US. Let's start off with the best budget boards here. Now we're gonna focus almost exclusively on Z690 for obvious reasons. The pricing on many of those boards has completely slid since they were introduced last year. Now remember, if you got 13th gen Intel, you want and need BIOS flashback in order to really guarantee that you're gonna be able to get this thing to post. The first board I'm gonna take a look at is the ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming 4. Now remember, we're talking about budget motherboards here. So we're talking about entry level, level audio codecs like the ALC897, that's what this has, fewer M.2 connections, this has two, plus it also has a Hyper M2 for a Wi-Fi card on it. So you can get this with Wi-Fi for a couple bucks more. You can always add that in later. Has the BIOS flashback, but you're not gonna get features like the built-in you know, rear IO shield. That being said, honestly, it's got six high-speed ports, including a Type-C two type A ports. Honestly, if you're just gaming, you probably don't need much more than that, especially if you end up with like a 12600K, 13600K on Black Friday, getting a super discount. You're just trying to put together a cheaper system. This is one I would take a look at for $139. Going up in terms of overall quality of boards, the Gigabyte Z690 UD is definitely a very, very good motherboard. We got a 19 phase VRM. The previous ASRock board only had nine phases. Now we're at 19. Honestly, the VRMs on this thing are so incredibly overbuilt. You don't need to worry about any of the CPUs. Put a 13900K overclock it all day long. You'll do just fine with this. Entry level audio codec on it. You get a little bit more M.2 connectivity. So we've got three M.2s on this board instead of two. All these M.2s, by the way, are at PCIe Gen 4 speed. Again, you're not going to see PCIe Gen 5 speed, which I don't think anybody needs and nobody will need in the lifetime of these motherboards but you're not gonna see that until we get considerably higher up. Now, Gigabyte always does a good job on the rear panel. So here we've got absolutely tons and tons of connectivity, including more type A ports, $169. Now, this is a board that is right on the edge of some higher end motherboards. So you can decide in your market if this makes sense or you just need to spend about 20 or 30 bucks more. Jumping over very quickly to the best budget DDR5 motherboards, we're still in Z690 land. However, we've added a couple more. So we already talked about the Z690 Phantom Gaming, the DDR5 version of the board, very, very similar. You know, in fact, pretty much the exact same board except it's DDR5. This is one I would take a look at, about $155. You'll notice a, pr a slight price bump around the DDR5 versions of most of these boards. Another one to take a look at is the ASRock Z690M. Now, if you're looking for a micro ATX motherboard for DDR5, $160. Not a bad board, has a pretty good VRM on it. The only thing I will say, only one M.2 drive connector. It does have an M.2 Wi-Fi add-in card slot as well, but only one and not two storage drive. That might be a deal breaker for some, but actually has really, really good rear panel USB connectivity, even better than the other budget boards that we looked at for about the same price. You can also take a look at the MSI Pro Z690-A DDR5 model. Now the difference between the Z690-A and Z690-P, I'm not recommending the P because it does not have BIOS flashback. The dash A model has BIOS flashback. So just make sure if you have 13 gen Intel, you're getting that BIOS flashback. Again, cut down features. And honestly, right now selling for about $180. The problem is this board is starting to compete with boards that have way more in terms of their feature set. Now let's jump over to the best price to performance boards. Honestly, we're still mostly dealing with Z690 because we're in about the 180 to about $200 range. And there's a couple of boards here that when they came out, initially I told you that these boards were honestly, they were too good in terms of their feature set for the price that continues to be the case to the point where these boards have actually been nerfed. The Z6 790 versions of these boards have been nerfed because they were the Z690s were too good. So let's go over what boards they are. Gigabyte Gaming X, to me, 
one of the best price to performance motherboard. Now, if you don't like Gigabyte, that's fine. I have some alternatives for you, but let's go through why I think this board is really great. It's basically the UD version of the board. So it's still got that rock solid, like 19 phase VRM on it, ridiculously overbuilt. But what we're adding to this is we're adding upgraded ALC 1220 audio. And you can see the audio section down there looks really, really nice. It also adds an additional M.2 slot. So I believe we get four with this. That's really phenomenal. Now those M.2s are still all gen four. Again, we don't need gen five. If you feel like you need gen five, I will have some other boards I can recommend to you. In terms of the rear panel on this one, not bad. You've got uh, two super high speed USB ports. We've got four other high speed USB ports, including a type C two and a half gigabit Realtek LAN. And then you got your four type A's. That's for your mice, your keyboards, your other kind of slower devices that you don't need super fast connection. This is a great board built in rear IO shield on it. Obviously BIOS flashback gigabyte calls it Q flash plus just to be difficult. You have to know that the Q flash plus button on this is down here at the bottom of the motherboard. So don't look for it on the back of the panel. You will get lost. Same with the gigabyte UD board. They're down here at the bottom. Honestly, this is the board when it was $230. I was telling you this was the board to get. I know it had some initial DDR4 compatibility issues. Those have largely been straightened out. Remember, you can always buy memory off the QVL list directly. If you want to make sure that you're definitely getting memory that will be compatible with it. Fantastic motherboard and the DDR5 version of this board right here, only $10 more. If you are looking for a version of the Gigabyte Gaming X, it actually has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on it, then you got to jump up to the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Elite AX. A little bit more expensive, 199 That's both for the DDR5 and DDR4 version. VRMs on these boards are actually upgraded slightly, not that it really needs it. Audio stays the same. Everything else is pretty much the same on this board. Another board to take a look at is the ASRock Z690 Extreme. Now, my understanding is that the, only the DDR4 versions of these were ever released or sold, at least in the United States. States and there is no Z790 version of it. I think either they're going to release it later or maybe they're just going to cancel it together because it's another one of these too good to be true boards because it's pretty much got all the features that you would need, especially if you're just gaming, maybe doing content creation, you want more M.2s. This does only have two M.2 SSD slots on it has an M.2 Wi-Fi key on it as well. But again, ALC 1220 audio codec, VRM's a little bit weaker than the Gigabyte board, but again, 13 phase VRM and the VRM heatsink. So it's plenty for anything that you're gonna throw at it, especially if you're looking like a 13600K build. Maybe you just wanna go for the kind of that cool blue and black RGB styling on it. it has a bevy of high speed USB ports. This one does actually have dual LAN. Maybe that's attractive for some folks. But overall, if you're looking for a board that has kind of all the features and is priced really appropriately, this is another one to take a look at. If you're wondering where all the ASUS and MSI boards are, well, the problem with the ASUS boards is they don't include BIOS flashback on a lot of their boards under a certain price point. Boards like the Z690-A are actually quite phenomenal boards, but no BIOS flashback means no bueno for the 13th gen. So I simply can't recommend them. Similarly, we've got like the Z690 Tomahawk, good board, terrible price. Price, $260. I just can't see spending like another 80 extra dollars. If you're somebody who absolutely has to have MSI, this is the board I would recommend. Though I would say if you want the DDR5 version of it, I would take a look at the Z790-A, the Pro Z790-A. Very much almost an identical board, just has the Pro, which is typically a tier lower than the Tomahawk designation, but has that stronger DDR5 memory control that we were talking about earlier in the video. So if you're somebody who wants to run like the super, super, super fast DDR5-6 and you have to have MSI, I would take a look at the MSI Pro Z790-A. Jumping into some great color themed motherboards in the mid range, NZXT N7. Now, Pay close attention to this. The Z790 version of this board that's coming out, 299 currently, I'm filming this before launch, hasn't yet released. This is gonna be the DDR5 version and the Z690 version of this board that was released a year ago, this is DDR4. That's the big difference between the two. Typically with these NZXT boards, what you're buying is you're buying the cool styling because the feature set, honestly, I don't want to say mediocre because it's it's definitely more premium at ALC 1220 audio. It's got all five uh, audio outs. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's got a decent amount of USB connectivity in the back. But for $299, which is what these boards sell for, you would expect a lot more features. What you get with NZXT is you get the cool, clean, 
awesome looking aesthetic and you can get either the all white or you can get the black version. And they do sell an N5 version of this without all the metal plates on it. It's just a very bare looking motherboard. I don't know why anyone would buy that version of it. To be quite honest, you can get a lot better motherboards if that's all you want. But if you're looking for all white, all black theme builds or black and white themes build, these are always great. Now, if you're one of those people who absolutely has to have an ASUS board, and I know you folks exist out there because I get your messages all the time, let me give you a couple of options. None of them are priced very well. That's just ASUS, again, has completely overshot the mark. Unfortunately, no BIOS flashback, like I said, on their Z690s below the Strix version. I will show you some Strix boards that are Z690, but I think if you want to get into ASUS boards, DDR4, then the ASUS Tough Gaming Z790 Plus, Dash Plus, again, a DDR4 only board. I don't see any DDR5 board uh, on their website or that they've announced. Now, it's possible that they'll come with one later. They did, I believe, in the last generation. That being said, this is a good board. $289, definitely a good board. And if you don't mind spending the price premium, which is about $100 more than the boards I was just showing you, you do get the same ALC 1220 audio codec. You get decent rear connectivity. Not a bad board. Other potential options are like $300 for the Z690-A. That's a Strix board. That's the all white one. Again, great uh, feature set on it. it. Has BIOS flashback, so you can use this with 13th gen Intel. Or if you're looking to get that same same board as Z790, you're talking $379. The pricing on these Strix boards, to me, totally out of line with the other three board manufacturers. You really, really have to be dedicated to getting an ASUS board in order to buy one of these. Let's go through a couple of boards for creators, especially if you need Thunderbolt 4 support. Let's start off $339, the Gigabyte Z690 Aero D. This is a DDR5 only motherboard. It's got a number of great features. It has a postcode on it. It's got, if this is an EATX board, by the way, it's slightly larger. Make sure it's gonna fit into your case, but you can see there, it's got the two Thunderbolt, it's got tons of rear panel, super high speed USB connectivity. It's got dual LAN on it. Pretty much everything you need to be a creator is on this board, especially if you're in that Thunderbolt environment. It is back ordered right now. This is a very, very popular motherboard. So let me give you some alternatives. Other boards that I would look at if you need that Thunderbolt support, Z690 Tai Chi also has BIOS flashback and everything. Great motherboard. This is a DDR5 motherboard as well. $439. You can look at the Z790 version of it. It's four nine. I think it's 479. It's not that much more. So maybe you just decide to go for Z790 instead if it's not that big a price discount for you. The other one, of course, on the ASUS side is the ASUS ProArt Z690 Creator. Now this motherboard is also DDR5, has a couple of Thunderbolt ports in the back. Very, very popular, but of course, $450, quite a bit more expensive than the Gigabyte board. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Let me know down in the comments, what kind of motherboard features are you looking for in Z690 and Z790 motherboards? And check out those links in the video description. All the models are there. Check out pricing and availability in your region. And we'll catch you on the next one.